Today we're going to be talking about introverted sensing, also known as the stabilizing guardian or SI. And you're going to be learning what it is, some of its strengths and weaknesses. We're going to compare it to other cognitive functions that people often get confused. And we will talk about some superheroes and characters from pop culture that utilize introverted sensing as their strength. What's up, Legend? It's Sherman here from Geek Psychology, where I help geeks, gamers, and creatives to use their personality types' strengths to overcome their weaknesses, to have more motivation, and to live like the hero of their own life story. I often hear this feeling, and I've definitely felt it too, of being the NPC in somebody else's heroic journey. And we don't want that. We're done with that. So let's be heroic in our own lives. And part of that process is learning about your character class. If you're playing the wrong class, or you don't understand the skills of your class, then it's really hard to show up as the hero of your own story. So we're going to be talking about introverted sensing in this video. There are other videos that you can find over here as well. And let's get right into it. So first of all, what is introverted sensing? Well, if we look at the function sensing, then we know that it's a perceiving function. It's a way of taking in, gathering information about the world, and it's based off your senses. What you can feel, touch, taste, hear, smell, and it's also introverted. So it is subjective. It's taken inside you and processed, and then you have a understanding of the sensory realm that has been captured and reviewed and reflected over. So as you can see, it's not just the sensory realm, but it's a captured subjective post processed version within the RPG model, I say that it's easy for this character or you if you are an introverted sensor to reference past experiences to create or maintain consistency. This is the character who wants to conserve the lessons of the past. It's grounded in reality. It carefully reviews and recalls the past. It pays attention to what is going on inside the body, and it is often methodical. So with that, you have a better understanding, hopefully, of introverted sensing, the stabilizing guardian. And we can talk more about the spe specific dynamics as we go into the strengths and weaknesses. But first, a quote from Carl Jung. The objective impact of a stimulus is removed from it and immediately replaced by a subjective reaction, no longer related to the reality of the object. So that might sound a bit confusing at first, so let's break it down a little bit more. So there's the sensory stimulus, the thing that is happening in the outer world. Um, I don't want to grab an object because it might get destroyed with the green screen, but let's say I have a, a cup of coffee, I have my mug. I'm not interacting directly with that, seeing it for what it is, noticing the exact textures as it is. I'm taking that and then I'm going inward and saying, well, what was my experience of this mug before? Or what does it remind me of in terms of my past experiences? Or this texture, how does this texture relate to another mug that I used to like when I was 10 years old? You see, it's, it's a post-process reflecting over instead of an immediate direct engagement with that item. And it's not just items, it's entire experiences. And this is why I call introverted sensing as the stabilizing guardian a defensive character. And it's a protective, a protecting type. So it is defensive because it is the me, the subjective version of this the approach to life, the sensory approach to life. Okay, it's not necessarily slow, but it, it takes time to go through the neural pathways in the back and then be processed and go up to the front. But it's also not directly attached to what is going on. So it takes time sometimes to reflect over it before engaging with it. So that's why I call it a defensive class. And I call it a protector type because it is intentionally trying to create a situation where we know what is going to happen or where we can prepare for it. And it does this by reflecting over what has happened before and bringing in the lessons from the past. All this data, all these experiences 
from our own personal experience, but also we can um, source experiences from other authorities as well, other people that have gone through similar situations, humanity in general. And we can use that as an archetype to interact with what is going, what is happening now or what might happen in the future. And this brings us into the strengths of the stabilizing guardian. So we've already talked a little bit about it, but when we think of the stabilizing guardian, there's a profound memory recall aspect to it. And it's not just that introverted sensors have a great memory. It's that introverted sensors, this guardian character, puts a lot of time and energy into remembering the things that have happened. And when you spend 10,000 hours, way more than that, mastery time, delving into your captured experiences, well, then you revivify it a bunch and you have a lot more definition and detail because you've trained your brain to focus on that. Or in RPG terms, you've given a lot of XP to that character. So that character is a lot higher level and they're really good at doing that. And there's also attention to minor details. So with this attention to minor details, it is looking at the things that happened in the past and it's intentionally putting effort and energy into revivifying, into noticing the distinct sensory aspects and appreciating those. There's also a strong memory for kinship details. So these are facts about people that you are related to, people in your community, family, friends. Introverted sensors like always know birthdays. And if they forget it, then it really stresses them out often because they, this is a pride that they have. This is like one of their core skills and strengths is to remember things about people and experiences and this statistical recollection of what happened. Even like baseball cards, remembering the stats and the details on the baseball cards. There's also an excellent understanding and usage of past experiences. So it's not just having the experience and then appreciating it and, and kind of going into reverie and reflecting over it. It's like, how do we use this? <laughs> what important lessons were taken or could be taken from this past experience that we can apply to stabilize things? to maintain consistency and familiarity. And with this comes often methodical problem solving. It's a step-by-step -step linear approach to understanding things because there's a story attached to everything. And with that story, there are different story beats that have happened. And so when you take that and you capture that, and then you say, okay, well, how do I do this next task? How do I cook this meal? Well, there are steps that you can follow to do that. And that is what introverted sensing often relies on. There's like a strategic formation for how to fight this boss. And so SI captured that experience, that understanding, that knowledge, and then brings it out and says, okay, so this is the first thing that's going to happen. This is the second. This is the third. So we need to be here. We need to do this. And this is the next thing to expect. One habit that I attribute to my introverted sensing is when I played before, when I played a lot of League of Legends, I still play Wild Rift on my phone. But when I used to like be really focused on League of Legends and like StarCraft 2, I would spend a lot of time researching the best builds, the best strategies. And then I would take that and I would apply that to my game. And that's how I improved by researching what has worked for other people, and then applying that and using that. My ENFP friend struggled with that because he was more about the explore, like, well, what can I, you know, let, let me just have some fun with this. What, what uh, item would be good in this situation? Or what do I want to build right now? Instead of as like I was doing and my ESTJ friend, we would research, we would say, okay, this has been proven to be the best one. So let's utilize that. And now some weaknesses or the stabilizing guardian. So with everything, there are strengths and there are weaknesses. If you focus so much on one thing, you're going to be great at that. But then that means that you're naturally not paying attention to a bunch of other things. And that's the cost of specialization. And that is okay. A lot of times people want to improve all of their weaknesses 
but know that there will always be a weakness. And that's okay. You need to, you know, raise the level of your ability to deal with that enough that it's not ruining your life, of course. But focus on what you're good at. You know, if you're the guardian, be the guardian. Don't try to be a rogue. Don't try to be a healer. Be you, you know, and do that to the best of your ability. So we need to talk about some of the weaknesses, though. First, there's a tendency to resist change. Because the guardian is often focused on what happened in the past and how do I make sure that things are familiar and consistent, well, when there's a magical monkey wrench thrown into the mix, things happen, it gets mixed up, and that causes a lot of stress for the guardian. Now, if you put a guardian in a new unfamiliar zone where there's, they don't know what to expect, they have no experience with it, well, then they're likely going to be more open to perceiving what is happening. And then they'll start to connect it to what happened in their past and maybe similar situations by bringing in the extroverted intuitive function as well. And then they'll process it and hopefully come out with some sort of stable approach to dealing with it. Because the perceiving functions are open. They're not judging functions. But if they do have some familiarity with it, or if it's been built into their life experience, like this is who I am because this is where I came from, then there's a lot of resistance to change. And we need that. We need resistance to change because humanity would be ubarred if there were, if everybody was just chaotic vanguards running around doing whatever we wanted. We need some consistency. That's how we have become the human race that we have become, for better or worse. And this preference for routine might create some um, resistance to new experiences. Because I know this, this is what I like. Like for me, there's a specific coffee that I really like, canned coffee in Japan, it's everywhere. But there's a specific one that I, I like. And so I drink that. There are a bunch of other ones. You look at the vending machine, there are like 24 at least different variations of drinks that I could have. But I know that this is the one I like. I've experienced it a bunch. I have some attached memories and sensations attached to it. So I drink that. And I eat the thing that I always eat. Now, when I want to, when I'm intentional about it, I, I will do different things. But usually I'm like, well, why would I change it if this is the thing that I like? And that's my version of it as an INFP who uses the guardian as his tertiary function, as my sidekick or my newbie character that is along this RPG psychic questing, questing party. Try saying that 10 times fast. And also there's a difficulty often in dealing with abstract or theoretical concepts. Oftentimes guardians don't really care to think about that stuff. One, because it's not where they're, they've honed their skills, right? They're in the sensory world. But also because at a certain point, it's like, well, this isn't practical anymore. Like, how do we use this? How do we apply this information? Are we just, you know, using idea space for fun? Okay, we can do that for a while. But eventually, it's, it's like, well, let's apply it. Let's do something with it. And so there's often a little bit of hesitation or struggle in dealing with these big abstract theoretical concepts. Doesn't mean that they can't do it. But there's a little bit of a hurdle compared to some of the other types who fully dive into that stuff and then have no stability in their lives. Now I'm going to list out a bunch of different characters from pop culture, mainly superheroes, but not all superheroes. And I want you to focus on some of the commonalities between these characters, like their determination, loyalty, um, they're referencing past experiences to guide them in new or future challenges. There's a sense of stability that comes with these characters. And often it's a bit slower and it's like a slow and steady build into their goal. So these are sourced from the personality database. I think I agree with all of these. Not necessarily precious about any of them. If you want to comment down below and say, no, no, it's not this type because I've watched every episode and analyze it, then go for it, bring it on, like, give me that knowledge, that's okay, too. So I'm just going to list them out and enjoy this. Steve Rogers, Captain America, Groot, King T'Challa, Phil Coulson, Alfred Pennyworth from Batman, 
Morty from Rick and Morty, the narrator from Fight Club, Baymax, Samwise Gamgee, Mikasa from Attack on Titan, Squidward, Darth Vader, Din Djarin from The Mandalorian, Rick from The Walking Dead, Cyclops, Nebula, Gamora, Punisher, James Rhodes, War Machine, Pepper Potts, Commissioner James Gordon. So maybe that was fast, maybe you want to go back through it, but there are tons of characters that bring out this stability and past focused a lot of times. This is the thing that happened that, you know, Steve Rogers, Captain America, dude was frozen in time and comes from the past into now and is bringing all these like floods of memories and strategies that worked from him or for him when he was, uh, you know, trained in the military. Or you see caretaker vibes, like everybody's going crazy. I need to be the one to be the st stable rock within this crew. And that really shows a lot of the stabilizing guardians approach to life. And one of the main complaints that I've heard from stabilizing guardians is that like, I need to do this. I need to show up and do my duty and do it right. Because if I don't, then everybody else is going to mess it up. And then I need to deal with the chaos that they've created. So why not do it correctly the first time? So let's compare the stabilizing guardian interpreted sensing to some of the other cognitive functions. So you get a more well rounded understanding of this character class. So first, let's talk about the stabilizing guardian introverted sensing versus extroverted sensing, the engaging adventurer. Just look at the names that I've made for these. Okay, stabilizing guardian, engaging adventurer, right there, you have a different perspective on how to um, interact with the sensory realm. These are both sensing functions. So they're about perceiving, capturing, learning, bringing in information from the sensory world. But there's an, a defensive approach from the stabilizing guardian. And then there's an offensive approach from the engaging adventurer. If you are stabilizing something, that means you're checking with the past what worked before, you're bringing out routines, you're implementing those past lessons. If you are engaging, in the sensory realm, you are here, you're present, you're focused on now, you're tasking, juggling different physical, you know, tasks and items and things like that. And you are merging with the sensory realm as it is now, not post processing. And the guardian is also not engaged with the real world as heavily in the now because it has that sensory, um, springboard, I suppose, and then reflects over it and says, how does this relate to my past experiences, or my understanding of life, and you also have the noun guardian and adventurer, the guardian, just imagine it up with its shield posted, you know, moving forward, slowly pushing through um, the the mobs, the floods of minions, and the adventurer is more like a warrior and is running in there two axes just swinging and going crazy enjoying the process of dealing with um, higher and higher sensory experiences, new novel experiences, as opposed to experiences that have been reflected and processed over. And there's also introverted sensing, the stabilizing guardian versus the introverted intuitive function, the visioning mystic, so SI and NI. So we didn't talk too much about the ideas realm. There are other videos for that. You can look at the NI video, the visioning mystic video here. But there's the sensory realm of capturing data and information, learning about things. And then there's the ideas realm, which is saying this point and this point and look at the connection between these two points. This is where all the interesting stuff is. And look at the connection between here. And so the visioning mystic is also an introverted function, it's subjective, it's defensive. And it's visioning, it's seeing things in the future, forecasting or reframing how one sees the world, or how one understands something. And so it's forward focused, looking into the future, or why are things this way, and maybe referencing, you know, how things have developed in the past, but it's more focused on the ideas, because it's an intuitive function. 
And also, if you look at the character classes themselves, the Guardian and the Mystic, and the Guardian, again, has got his shield up, slower, methodical approach. Now, the Mystic can also be slower and methodical too, but it's more about scrying or seeing things in different ways. So what historically happened versus reinterpreting or understanding at a deeper level the meaning of these things that happen. So what are some of the benefits of understanding and improving the stabilizing guardian within you? See, I treat all these different cognitive functions as personified aspects, these different characters within your mental questing party. And if you create better intrapersonal rapport, so better connection, better relationship within yourself with these parts of yourself, then a lot of the struggles go away. Because we all have our baggage that we project onto other people. And these cognitive functions, these characters play different roles within our psyche based off our personality type. And if you can appreciate the guardian, for example, in other people, then you can appreciate it more within yourself. Or if you appreciate it within yourself, then you can appreciate it more within other people. It's fractal. And so when you, if you don't like a cognitive function or if you have a too idealistic version of it in your head, then it kind of makes things muddy. So just appreciate all the functions and you can create better communication, better understanding, Self-development becomes easier and you understand people's motivations better. You can motivate yourself. You know its strengths and weaknesses. And you're like, well, you know, for me, I struggle with this thing. Oh, that's like why you're struggling with this other function. Oh, it makes sense. And then you can have appreciation for other people. And that's awesome. I like appreciation for other people. I want to stop for a second. If you have not taken the eight hero personality assessment, go to geekpsychology.com, take the assessment, and you will get a, a ranking of all of these different characters. And it's a really fun personality assessment. And it's been called thrilling before, which is pretty cool. And just use that as base knowledge for you to improve your life. It gives you a lot of tips and techniques as well that you can apply to your journey. And it's gamified. It's a lot of fun. But let's get back to introverted sensing. So the guardian gives you a better appreciation for who other people are based off their past, based off what they went through. If you're a guardian, you know that, you know, the family that you grew up in affected who you became. It doesn't mean you're stuck in that, but there are lessons that you learn from there. And hopefully you can wrap those with gratitude and you can apply those to healthy situations in your life. But just knowing that, okay, this person's struggling today, maybe they, maybe they had a bad day. Maybe they've had a tough couple weeks or, you know, just appreciating the struggle that comes from their experiences. And we also would get a better way of understanding how things are by, based off how things have progressed linearly. So if you can look at the timeline of something and see where you are now and where things start started or maybe even before that then you can you know you can understand why things have turned into this as they are why they have emerged into the present state and you can also mine that for details for information for strategies i imagine dwarves digging into the past and harvesting different ores that they're using and crafting and creating different bits of gear and items that they can bring into the present and then into the future. There's also a point that is not often talked about too much within introverted sensing. I don't even talk about it too much, but it's in a keen awareness of your internal states like hunger or fatigue, excitement, calm, pain. It's understanding, well, things I'm feeling this way now. I didn't feel like that before. What's the difference in here? And what is it telling me? What is the sign? And that ability to have this, I guess maybe it's called proprioception, this understanding of what is going on within your body is extremely helpful. And it's something that really messes me up as an INFP who has I as a weaker character. I don't notice these pains in my body or I go like all day without eating if I'm left 
left to my own you know, ways without my wife caring for me. And these are things that I just don't pay attention to. And it can go on for too long, and then I can have issues and problems because I didn't focus on it enough. And it's getting better with more attention into introverted sensing. And if I paid attention to it more, then it would improve even more. And with the Guardian, we can also memorize things in a scripted structure better. When my ESTJ friend and I were studying Japanese, he would just master every kanji, every like of the complicated Chinese style writings, every time. He would just instantly look at it and he would reflect, he would like review it, review it, review it, go over it like 10, 15 times in his head, and then move on to the next one. And me, I was just like, I don't know what to do with this stuff. I eventually found a way to create stories through the different radicals and the kanji, and that was really helpful. That's my own ideational way of doing it. But he could look at it, review it, methodically process it, and then go on. And he would, he did so well. He did so well. Let's talk a bit about some of the tips for developing the stabilizing guardian. So first, engage in activities that require you to use structured formats. Follow a recipe, follow a procedure, and be okay with it. Get comfortable with it. If you are an ENP, for example, you are the innovating explorer type of character, and you're a vanguard, you want to explore new things and push out there and blaze new trails, this might be difficult for you. And that's all the more reason to do it and take some lessons from it and continue or not, depending on your goals for self-development. Another one, as always, practice mindfulness and grounding techniques. Practice being calm in, into your body, understanding you know, how you're sitting, how that's affecting your, the feeling in your toes and your breathing paying attention to what's going on inside your body. And also journaling by recording and reviewing experiences that you had throughout the day or even further back in the past, then you can start to build a better connection to the past experiences. And if you can mine those for gratitude, then you're going to set yourself up for a lot of really positive health benefits as well. Some ways to balance the stabilizing guardian with extroverted sensing and with extroverted intuition are to notice if you are coming from the guardian perspective to notice that the more experiences the more different contexts that you can get for yourself the wider the database or the bigger the reservoir of captured experiences you have that you can reflect over and that improves the quality of those in my opinion because you have more and you can sift through that to find the better nuggets of, of gold and insights and information. If you're only limiting yourself to Goldshire or the starting town and you're not getting experiences outside of that, well, you know this area really well. And if that's good for you, that's good. But what if you expand it just a little bit more or a little bit more? There might be some other loot or experiences or allies or towns out there that you actually like more than if you didn't even get out of the, the starting zone. So let's talk a little bit about overcoming some of the challenges with the Stabilizing Guardian. We've talked about a lot of the strengths and struggles, so now we can look at it as, well, what else can I do? And I feel that the most important thing is, if you are really heavy on the Guardian, to embrace the attitude of learning, of adventuring beyond your comfort zone, and this is important for everybody, but for you as a guardian or somebody who appreciates the guardian character so much is to know that it's going to be a struggle and that's okay. And trying different things just allows you to understand yourself better and to have more experiences that you can enjoy reviewing and processing. And if you don't use the guardian as one of your main characters, Make sure that you know that the Guardian is an important character within your questing party, within your fellowship. And the more time that you can give to that in a positive way, the better things will be. So spend some time um, enjoying washing dishes and noticing the, the temperature of the water and comparing that to different times. Um, or you know, go to past experiences in your mind before you go to bed and, you know, go back to the beach in Okinawa and enjoy those experiences. 
take some time to, it's hard to go through this video without saying appreciate so many times. Take some time to incorporate those experiences into a routine for your life and things will become more stable. If you struggle with everything outside of me is too wacky and too chaotic, well, this is one of the characters that is really good at stabilizing with a consistent standard. So again, to briefly recap the stabilizing guardian, introverted sensing, remember it's a perceiving function, it's focused on the senses. It's about perceiving, capturing, bringing in data or information, whatever the experience is in the sensory world, and then subjectively processing through it, saying, what do I know about this? How, where did I experience this before? What is this like from my past? And then using that to understand how to deal with the current thing and often into the future of using that knowledge and implementing that knowledge. And it's also got that internal body bodily awareness that is often forgotten that is extremely important when you're thinking about memorizing dance steps or if you're learning how to sing you can check what is the difference that's making the difference between how I sang this note now and how I sang it before and that is knowledge that can be built into future success and remember that by developing the stabilizing guardian and bringing it into your crew of heroes. You can holistically improve your life. You can have better experiences with other people, better relationships, better relationship with yourself. You can leverage more of your strengths. Or if you know that that's a weakness, you can find somebody else that is really good at that, that wants to do it. And you can bring them on to support you in your journey. Or you can study them and learn from how they breathe, how they hold their body, how they approach these different situations like I was telling about my ESTJ friend and studying kanji. If I had the awareness at that time, I could see, oh, well, this is how it works for him. Maybe I should do that too. And I'm sure I would have improved. And if you like this and, and you want some more understanding of these characters, then go to Path of Heroes Academy, poha.geekpsychology.com. And I have a whole course on this and we create different characters for these different cognitive functions and we learn real life practical exercises and activities as well as um, some fun ones where we you know talk to the character we analyze uh, different situations by asking the characters different questions and it really shakes things loose and helps your holistic self-development so there are always lessons to learn from other character classes and i want to know down below what are the lessons that you've learned? What are the insights that you've had from this video? Uh, share it with me and the rest of us so that we can all improve and raise our levels as we heroically approach uh, new domains of life. All right, good luck, have fun. Peace.